Hi, I'm Jeremy Watkin, Head of Quality at FCR. And I'm Travis Wild, the Project Specialist at FCR. We're excited to bring to you our second Customer Solutions Spotlight. Today we want to focus on Zendesk. Their multi-channel suite of customer communication solutions includes email, voice, social media, chat, and even self-help. And it's changing the way co companies do customer service. Uh, at FCR, we found that 43% of our clients use Zendesk, so we think it's a big deal and we want to talk about it today. And don't forget about the customization that you can do with Zendesk. Zendesk supports a variety of plugins and third-party app developers to integrate with Zendesk. So when you're operating on the different channels, like you mentioned, you know, email, phone, social, SMS, you can really tailor that experience for your customers or clients to your industry and what you're looking for with your company brand voice. Um, Zendesk is so important to us at FCR that we actually flew out some of our colleagues to the Zendesk University training that they had at their headquarters down in California. And we brought back five tips that we want to share with our customers and clients. All right, so now we're going to dive into some of the best practices that we've found from the Zendesk training session. So the first item that we want to talk about is grouping our agents. So agents and admins will belong to different groups and they need to be a part of at least one group, but they can be a part of as many groups as they need to as well. When you assign a ticket to an agent, you'll also be assigning it to the group that the agent belongs to. And so some of these benefits are you can assign tickets to multiple agents at once. So this means you can do this for also things outside of tiers two. So not just tier one, tier two, tier three. You can also do it for like problem tickets or VIP tickets. You can create as many groups as you need. Uh, the next item is automating ticket assignment. We'll dive into this a little bit more with triggers, but triggers use groups. And so groups are important so we can start automating ticket assignments. You can do a variety of things with the automation. You can do it based on service level, based on language, based on the time it's coming in, like business hours of operation, um, et cetera. The next item is ensuring the access to views and macros. And basically, we're, you're making sure that what someone needs to do their job is what's available to them without all the extra stuff that maybe other teams and tiers need. So this way, they can be much more efficient in getting to the customer's problem and then solving their solution because they're not having to filter or search through a bunch of stuff they don't need. Finally, uh, we really want to talk about slicing reports by group. Group is how you can get the metrics for the group. So because we're in the outsourcing sphere, um, we usually get grouped on our own so that we can take a look at our performance versus internal metrics versus maybe other vendors. And it's just beneficial for everyone to understand what's going on. You can group them by supervisors if you need to, just so that way you can better understand the reports. And so this is a great way uh, for getting better information. Travis, that fourth one really speaks to me on the reporting side. Um, <clears throat> the alternative to not having groups is to uh, filter by your different agents. And if you have a team of a hundred people and you want to you want to parse out a group out of that, you end up having to you know click click a bunch of check boxes um, to get the same effect that you would get with a group. So a group can save you a ton of time. Um, over and over again, especially as, as you add or remove people from the team. Our second tip is to uh, use fields instead of tags. And I don't want to devalue tags because they do have their place. I know just to give you an example of tags, it's a really easy way to um, to, to cat quickly categorize a case. Uh, we used to use it uh, in a past life <clears throat> to track incidents. So like if if we knew we were having an issue with our service, we might have a macro and have a tag tied to it. So we could really quickly see a count of how many tickets uh, we get about that, that particular incident. Uh, but what I really wanna talk about are fields and some of the benefits of fields. Um, the first real benefit there is the ability to collect uh, end user information up front, whether it's demographic information or details about the case uh, or a couple of my favorite things that you might want to collect with a custom field are um, the the root cause or the driver that that uh, caused the issue that that the the customer is experiencing. And you may have the customer provide that up front, or you may have your agents do that after the fact. Uh, the next thing, the next benefit really for uh, fields is uh, it creates meaningful views. Uh, you can actually based on a field that a customer uses, it might be tier two or something like that. 
uh, the, those tickets can all be grouped in one view, so you can have a team of people working on those specific tickets. The, the third one is you can automate account activity. So if someone marks that they are, a, it's a tier two type issue, that, that ticket can be routed directly to your tier two group rather than, um, rather than sitting and needing to be triaged by an agent. And finally, I think you'll see this more than once is uh, the ability to report based on those fields. I know when we look here at FCR at customer satisfaction, for example, the ability to tie a, a driver or a ticket type or something like that to the customer satisfaction is really powerful to, to being able to actually um, slice and dice what the, the top issues are that, that you might need to address in your customer experience. So the only part that I want to add on is uh, that last point there with data validation and Bailey data integrity. Um, when you're using fields, the nice thing about fields compared to tags is you can put them in a drop down menu. And because it's a drop down menu, you can only choose one of the options. You can't add extra things or not you forget different items because we're all human. So some people are going to make mistakes. And so trying to minimize that is very beneficial by using tags or using fields instead of tags. So the next item we want to talk about is playlists. So we really want to talk about creating playlists for the different agents on your team. And there's a variety of different benefits. And as we can see from this screen here, there's that play button right up there. And so the benefits of the play button are widespread. Um, the unfortunate item for the play button, though, is this is only able to be locked down where they have to use it at the higher tiers in Zendesk. So you have to be on the higher plan, um, specifically the enterprise plan for Zendesk to allow you to actually lock it down so agents have to use the play button. They can't just cherry pick. Um, so on smaller teams, this is something that you can still coach to behaviors and kind of control um, if you see people that are cherry picking and then kind of get it handled. On larger teams, though, this is something you definitely want to consider if you're not already on the enterprise plan because you can lock it down. Once you lock it down, every ticket then it comes in first serve, first out, and it's a much better experience for the customers. And it also helps the agents, too, so some of the different benefits of this play button um, is, as I was mentioning, when you lock it down, it will uh, broaden their experience and knowledge because they have to handle tickets maybe they don't have experience in. Um, it'll also increase the efficiency because instead of trying to find one that's for their view or their skill set, then they're just getting the next ticket in line. And it will also help you with your service levels because they're just getting the next ticket. And so if they're moving on, they have to leave a reason for why they're moving on um, so they couldn't handle it. So that way you can easily uh, coach to behaviors and have a better experience for your customers. Travis, I think this one really extends the life of uh, customer service leaders. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've seen cases where maybe a really long, complex ticket just sat in the queue for a long time because no one really wanted to tackle it. And this kind of eliminates that. And, uh, you know, it's it might be a little painful to work through some of those more difficult tickets, but I think it's also a learning experience and, and an opportunity to empower your team. That really seg segues into tip number four, which is uh, using macros wisely. And uh, I'm sure you've had some experience with macros. Some people call them canned responses. Uh, and it's oftentimes, feel, oftentimes feels like you're interacting with a robot. Well, it doesn't have to be. There's so many benefits to using macros if you use them wisely. Uh, and I'd just like to highlight a few few of those. The first one is really decreased ticket handle time. Uh, a macro allows you to uh, have a customized, a, a tailored response, a pre-written response um, that your agents can then tailor to meet the needs of the, the particular situation. But what you may not know is you can also apply tags and custom fields to a macro so you can you can more easily um, tag and it helps you in the back end with your reporting. Uh, that's that's one of the main benefits of macros. Uh, you also get more engaged agents. There have been studies that show that that really well written macros, along with you know your self help, um, give your agents the ability to learn faster because they have the they know where to find resources, uh, answers to questions and whatnot. Also keeps information consistent. Uh, when you have some of that information in a macro that everybody is dipping from, so it's in a central location, uh, the information that's being sent to your customers is consistent. There's nothing more frustrating than 
than customers contacting one agent and getting one answer and then contacting another agent and getting another answer. Macros really eliminate that and and you can't you can't undersell the importance of consistency uh, when you're communicating with customers. Also reduces grammatical and spelling errors um, and, and also actually the need to spend a bunch of time proofreading. Uh, so you, again, going back to benefit number one, you're going to save time. Obviously, you still want to proofread and whatnot, but uh, but it's going to reduce a lot of those grammatical errors that that show up if we're freehanding every ticket response. Uh, and then finally, as I mentioned, the ability to apply ticket fields automatically is really powerful. Um, so you can see um, when a specific macro is being used, you can see uh, the exact ticket type that 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 it was as well. And that just allows you to slice and dice in your reporting later on. Yeah, so one of the things I want to talk about too, because these are some great points and macros are an amazing tool that you can use to, to help build that relationship with your customers. I want to talk a little bit about the other side, which is when they're used inappropriately though as well, because while macros are amazing, macros can also be basically a little dangerous. If you're sending out just macro responses, like, you know, oh, it's a macro email, like just a password reset, I'll just send out this macro. You have to be careful because you can also then cause problems. We're all aware and have seen emails um, or other customer service kind of things go on Twitter or Facebook where someone wrote in a heartfelt message trying to understand like what's going on, um, you know, with their situation and they just got back a pure canned response. And, you know, that causes a much bigger hurdle. And so, um, part of our best practices too is to make sure that you're tailoring the emails. Like it's so important to take what the customer's writing in and tailor it, um, just because of that. Travis, that's that's a really great segue into this this other point. Just just a few tips on writing macros. So you mentioned number three, which is which is the importance of tailoring and personalizing for each situation. Um, also, be sure that they match your company's voice and style. Um, you know, think about the fact that you're probably sending out a variety of marketing emails to customers as well as you know random emails like password resets and things like that you should really be communicating in a consistent voice to your customers and that should that should bridge over into your customer service operation as well the voice should be consistent part of that is training your agents to speak and write in that voice uh, but part of it is really writing um, any of your pre-written messages all in that same voice and style uh, so important. And don't forget to make them positive and engaging. There's no rule anywhere that says that they need to be stuffy. So that should help with with uh, writing better macros. So the next thing we want to talk about is, is really the heart and soul of being a Zendesk admin, and that's triggers and routing information and automations. Um, we're going to talk primarily about triggers, but there's also automations um, that you can go into as well. So Triggers are basically an if then statement that you can customize into whatever your business need is. Um, and so when you're thinking about an if statement, you're, like, you're basically going into if this ticket has this criteria, then I want you to do with this with it. So for example, um, if a ticket comes in and say the preferred language is Spanish, then you can automatically route it to maybe your Spanish you know, support center. You can even do more though. You can then add additional criteria such as if it's within these hours, I want it to go to this Spanish support center. If it's these other hours, like after hours, then I want to maybe go to our after hours support center. So that way you can really get down to the nitty gritty and keep adding on additional criteria. And this is how you can get Zendesk to work for you instead of you working for Zendesk manually and making everything work that way. The more automations and ticket routing that you can put into Zendesk, the more you will get out of Zendesk as well. For example, this can also be used for CSATs. Um, you can also set up triggers to automatically reach out to customers that had a negative CSAT as long as the ticket doesn't go into a closed status. So that way they can still change it to good and you can actually save CSAT readings with triggers so that way you don't have to have someone on your team scan through all the ones well, which ones are negative which ones can we go save you can have that automatically happen you can instantly let that customer know that you know you are listening to the feedback um, and have someone follow up with them to try and get that changed from a negative csat to a positive csat another example is you can set up triggers in regards to service levels so say you have a VIP customer or a subscription plan and you want to make sure that they are handled within a certain amount of time, 
you can set up triggers to automatically forward uh, tickets that are maybe getting close to service level uh, being expired. So that way no one misses service level. You can set up additional notifications, additional visibility, so it can expand who the ticket is going to to be solved by so that you can really take care of your customers. And so this is something that I really want to emphasize the triggers are how you're going to get the most out of Zendesk. And the best way for you to work with this is to work with the Zendesk team. They have people and your manager can actually help you set some of this up. Travis, I, th I think those are some great examples of how to use triggers. And it just reminds me of the old statement, work smarter, not harder. And uh, I think all five of these tips really help us harness the power of what Zendesk can do for our customer service operation. Wow, great compilation of tips. Travis, I can't help but think that we've just barely scratched the surface on this. I would agree. I think we could spend all day talking about Zendesk and what you can get out of Zendesk, um, especially since so many of our clients use, use it. What I want to leave on, though, is the Zendesk kind of platform and the scalability of Zendesk. So when you're a smaller client for Zendesk and you're a smaller customer base, you can still get what you need to get up off the ground without paying the same you know, huge fees that you pay for other platforms. And then as your business grows and expands, you can then get the enterprise controls that you're looking for as a large organization. So Zendesk can really service a variety of customer sizes and businesses. Great point. If you have any other questions about Zendesk, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you so much for checking out our customer solution spotlight. Take care.